This is Impact with Don Wenner. Don Wenner here with Ryan Harris. Ryan, welcome. Thank you so much for being on the show here today. Great to be with you, Don. So I know you live in Denver, and I know you've had, I think, three stints with the Broncos. So are you a Broncos (laughs) fan here still today? Well, once you get a ring like this, you know, it's hard (laughs) not to be a Bronco fan. So, uh, you know, just a a total story um, of, of, you know, effort, conflict, failure, and success. You know, got drafted to the Broncos 2007, fired in 2011, uh, went to Houston for two years, Kansas City for a year, came back to Denver, won the Super Bowl, and then finished out in Pittsburgh. So uh, had an amazing career, have amazing friends from that time. And uh, learned a lot about failure, resilience, and success. Awesome. We're going to dig into a lot of that, but we got. I know everybody here. We got a lot, a lot. Of course, like everybody, we got a lot of football fans. So, so I, <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you uh, that you're a Broncos uh, fan, and and obviously your incredible success there. I'm a lifelong Raiders fan, and actually we <laughs> play each other this Sunday. Um, so uh, excited for that. Actually, a couple weeks ago, I live here in St. Augustine. A couple weeks ago, the the uh, Broncos were here. And I uh, took my next door neighbor and his family with us to our, our tickets. And they're lifelong Broncos fans. Uh, awesome. Broncos won um, and started off, you know, 3-0. And, um, but uh, but uh, uh, it's a, a, a bit of rivalry as a Raiders fan for, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I hate the Raiders. I don't use that word for anyone <laughs> but the Raiders. Um, you know, it's funny, Don. One of my first um, – my first ever start in the NFL was in Oakland. And – in warmups, my teammate knocked me on the ground like he was just so amped up. He kind of knocked me on the ground when there were all these fans right there. And they're like, oh, Harris, we hope you're playing. And I was like, oh, my God, I am playing. Like, this is awful, you know. So uh, I'll never forget that and, and the many battles that I've had over the years with the Raiders. <clears throat> That's awesome. And and so my uh, favorite athlete of all time is Peyton Manning. And uh, hopefully by the time people uh, listen to this, we'll have Peyton Manning actually locked up to come speak at our March <laughs> event, which, which I'm excited about. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him face to face. So I, how, how, you got to tell me, how was how was playing with Peyton? What, what kind of was it behind the, the scenes and his leadership? You know, how, how was that experience? You know, playing with Peyton Manning was a gift, um, something that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. Uh, and, and I'm so thankful to, to Peyton. You know, he invited the offensive line from both his championship teams to his Hall of Fame party. Uh, we just had a blast. And just to give you an example of how hard Peyton worked, you know, um, in between, you know, most people who, who've done sports know a bench press, you got three people in your group, right? Somebody benching, somebody spotting, and somebody kind of resting after they get done. Well, Peyton Manning would get done bench pressing, jump up, and practice fumbled snaps while he was supposed to be resting, you know? Um, those are that's things that you just don't see. He and I would often be the first players on the field at practice because there's work to do. His communication was unbelievable. And the chaos he created for our opponents was fantastic. So uh, I could spend the whole episode, you know, telling you what I learned and, and the stories of of fun, of, of grit, of preparation that I could tell you around Peyton Manning. And it's no surprise to anyone who's played with him, um, the way he works, that he has had so much success in his career and is now a Hall of Famer. Awesome. Awesome. Well, with that said, we kind of jumped right in um, and kind of assumed everybody uh, already knows your background. But give us give us a little bit of your, your background. And I want to dig into what you've been up to since your playing career, which is quite, quite impressive. You have certainly haven't slowed down that that work ethic. So tell everybody a little bit, though, about your journey uh, to get to where you are here today. Yeah, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. I went to University of Notre Dame, graduated with two degrees, one in political science, the other in economics and policy. Um, got, you know, went through my NFL story, 10 years, nine surgeries, one Super Bowl ring in the NFL. Um, and since then, I've become an award-winning broadcaster here in Denver. I have a radio show here. Uh, I do the Notre Dame football games, uh, home and away for the Notre Dame football radio network. I also do Sunday, some Sunday night games with, uh, Westwood one on the radio. And I work with CBS interactive on their national sports platform on their 24 seven sports network. So, uh, in addition to that, I'm a keynote speaker, a best-selling author, and um, and I also uh, am an, a real estate investor. So and I recently got my mortgage brokerage license to help Finance of America create their Denver branch. And, and for me, as we talked on, it's really important to me to bring some some minorities into the world of real estate. It's such an amazing world. Real estate has given everybody a lot of flexibility, those who are in it. And I always say, Don, you know, you don't have to be in real estate to be wealthy, but every wealthy person I know is in real estate. So um <laughs> 
So I'm doing things to stay connected, to create impact and to create a future that includes people that look like me and and uh, and create experiences for homeowners that that may not fit the traditional bill. That's awesome. That's very, very exciting. And it, it is amazing. We have the pleasure of uh, having a, a number of, you know, ex NFL athletes uh, who invest with us passively in our funds. And then we have the pleasure of actually lending capital and partnering with with a wide ranging uh, number of uh, professional athletes and seeing who've been able to transition from a successful career in sports to actually digging in, not just being a figurehead, but actually digging in and learning the business and, and, uh, and, and, and driving value and your, your passion there, getting more minorities into, into the industry is certainly much needed um, and really incredible to, to hear. Uh, I know one of the ways that you're creating the kind of biggest impact on the, on the world today post your playing career is, as, a, as you just said, a best-selling author. I have your book right here, Mindset uh, for Mastery. Um, and uh, so, you know, to anybody who hasn't yet read read your book, give us the overview. What's the, what's the main uh, focus, what brought you to writing the book, and what's the, the core message behind uh, uh, Mindset uh, for Mastery? Well, I wrote the book, Dom, because, you know, when you win the Super Bowl, everything you believe about yourself comes true for other people, right? All of a sudden, to my friends and family, you know, I was a champion. I was, I sacrificed, you know, all these things that I believed that hadn't been proven yet happened in an instant. And I want people to have that moment in their life. You know, no matter who you are, where you're from, we all experience pain, loss, gain, embarrassment, success, failure. Um, and choosing your mindset, choosing how you react, choosing what you want to do out of your failures and embarrassments, that dictates your success. Uh, we talk about failure less than we talk about sex. So in my book, I wanted to talk about, you know, the difference in, in choosing your mindset and how it worked in my life, how I overcame failures at different parts of my career to be the champion that I am today. And, you know, just little things like, you know, using the phrases, I am, I can, I will to even when you don't believe in yourself, create what you want. Um, we're learning how to recognize distractions, understanding that you're going to look different as a leader. Now, everybody loves Peyton Manning. and many people miss the fact that Peyton Manning looks, operates, and studies differently than pretty much anybody else. And, and so often, I, especially in my career, you know, I was I was different because winning did matter. I mean, there are 1,600 players in the NFL, and only 53 will call themselves champions. And it all comes down to mindset, what they're willing to do, what they're willing to sacrifice. Are you strong enough to fail? Can you fail and succeed? Um, these are tough questions that a lot of us run from. But to be a champion, you have to approach it uh, with with intent, with conviction, and and with fun. So wanted to write the book to create an impact on those who I haven't been able to speak to, and to encourage others to go after their dreams. That's awesome. There's so much we could we could unpack uh, from what you just said there. Um, uh, but where where I'd love to start, and you actually already jumped on a few of the, the points I want to get to, such as the decision the decision we all make to to choose how we react it to, to to life, right? You know, life is a lot more about how you choose to react when things happen to you than what actually happens to you. And, um, you know, we're in a, a country today that there's a lot of studies that have been done since uh, COVID that say we have the highest levels of unhappiness in history today. We have the greatest percentage of people unhappy today. There's uh, stats out there saying right now that over 40% of Americans are struggling with some form of mental illness, the largest by far being depression, which to me, depression is another way of often saying unhappy. Um, and so what, what is your, your feedback? What are your thoughts? Why are so many people uh, unhappy? Why do they choose, as, as crazy as some people might think that that sounds, to be unhappy? Um, what, what, have you, what have you learned? Well, it's easier for it's easier for us as a people to make our happiness somebody else's responsibility. And and I believe that's where a lot of this comes from. You know, now depression is a very serious mental health issue, you know, and, and separate from comfort as well. But there is an element of comfort. Right. All right, Don, it's, it's your job to make me happy. I'm not happy. Well, that's that's not how this goes. I mean, happiness comes from within, not from going without something. So. Uh, we're responsible for creating our happiness. And whether that's choosing to look at a, a situation differently, whether it's getting active, uh, a great book that I read, Spark, talks about how exercise is better, is proven to be more effective for anxiety and depression than medication. So, you know, when somebody tells me they're depressed or they're not happy, I immediately ask, well, are you, are you exercising? Are you going out to walk? And, 
And, and it's very different for me too, Don, because I couldn't make it. I'm somebody who had made excuses early on in my career, but to be a champion, I couldn't make excuses. I had to address, hey, I am not listening. I'm not working hard enough. I am being arrogant. And those are changes I had to make to be responsible for my own happiness. And, you know, one of the things I would do is just have fun, celebrate every win. Hey, you woke up today. Some people didn't do that. You may have covering. You, you probably have Wi-Fi if you're watching this or a phone or a device. These are all things to be grateful for, not to be taken advantage of. And, and for those who may not may not want to exercise, uh, how, I always also ask this, well, I don't exercise. Okay. You know, instead of confronting somebody in, in a stance they're in, I said, well, how, where do you volunteer? Well, I don't volunteer. Volunteering can really give us a great sense of what we're missing in our lives that we are grateful for. I mean, go to a school where a kid is still hungry and in an after school program because that's the only way they're going to eat that afternoon. And you're helping them read. You're helping them do math because they don't have that structure back home. You know, I learned how to cut strawberries serving at the food kitchens in St. Paul at the Dorothy Day Center. And I'll never forget, Don, you know, one day I'm 16, 17 years old and you, know, you got to wake up at six in the morning. And all I'm looking forward to is the donut afterwards. Right. And this lady leans over the counter and goes, smile. And I was just so embarrassed. You know, here I am serving people who who are food, who are home housing insecure, who are food insecure. And I had the audacity to have an opinion other than great gratitude and service. So, um, you know, when people say they're not happy, uh, I say, are you exercising? Are you volunteering? Can you exercise? Can you volunteer? And oftentimes those things will bring us out of our comfort or us trying to make somebody else responsible for our happiness. Wow. Again, a, a lot, a lot there. I love the start take there. The, the, are you exercising? I, I often use the word movement and, and I think so much of, of happiness is just about, about movement and simple things like, you know, we buy everybody at DLP Fitbits and right. Just the fact of starting to track it and pay attention to it gets you to move a little more, right? That little yeah. buzz that comes and says, Hey, you haven't moved 250 steps because you've been sitting at your desk for the last you know hour straight, right? Just the, the power of movement. Um, is, is a powerful thing, even if it's not, you know, weightlifting or, or some sort of uh, form of exercise, just, just moving. And, and there's a lot of studies that show the movement in nature, right? Being outside because yes. that connects you with, you know, the Lord. If, if you believe in that, it connects you with, with, uh, um, with you know, with, with the sun, with, with, with uh, you know, our surroundings. Um, and that's so much of what happiness is, is, is connection. That's the same thing that service provides is that that connection with with others, that that feeling that you're a part of something uh, bigger than yourself, and we're all, as you said so well, just, just so blessed, right? You know, we everybody hears yeah. in media the one percent. Well, almost every American is in the one percent of the wealthiest, you know, most uh, most knowledge, you know, uh, in history, let alone right here, right now. It's, it's just we're we're just so blessed, and, and accepting that and realizing that is is a, is a phenomenal start. So. Um, with, with that said, you know, your, your top cop I love about service and, um, and, and movement. Uh, again, I, I look at people are often happy because they lack connection. And, and I believe mm -hmm. there's no replacement of connection to the Lord and, and that people are trying to find a different form of connection to replace that. And you can't. Um, but, but outside of that connection, connection with, with others is, is the other real genuine connection people are looking for. And many have turned to social media as trying to find a form of connection, which often has the reverse effect. Um, uh, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about your, your feeling about connection and how do people, uh, how do people connect in today's world? What are some, some tips you've in, in thoughts around the importance of connection and, and driving, you know, happiness on your life? I love this question, Don. Uh, first and foremost, can you recognize something about someone? You know, Don, I love those photos behind you, man. Your family looks wonderful. Oh, you're smiling already, right? We love to be seen right now. Don't start talking about what somebody's wearing and things like that. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, can you notice something about someone? Can you notice something about what they said? Um, because we all want to be individuals, right? So that's the first thing you can do to create connection. The second thing, can you be curious? You know, we listen for three things, to be contradicted, to be confirmed, right? Or to be curious. Being curious is the absolute best way and only way to listen, right? Regardless of what you, whatever discussion we're having, and regardless of what you say, can I be curious versus looking for a contradiction or to be confirmed in my own beliefs, right? And you'll hear this. Some people will say, oh, yeah, I'm a great listener. So well, I was just in St. Augustine. Oh, I love getting on a boat. I love being in Florida. 
well, I didn't finish and I didn't tell you that I got food poisoning, right? I mean, so you were <laughs> listening for confirmation or, you know, hey, I'm in, you know, St. Augustine and I love to be, oh, well, you know, I like to be up north, right? Well, now you're now you're being contradicted or looking for confirmation. But can you say something like, what's your favorite restaurant in St. Augustine, Don? Like, what's it look like there? Um, hey, you know, for me, I'm a surfer. Where can I surf? Where's your, if you're going to tell me where to surf in Florida, I need that beach town that, that has that surf culture. Where is it? And all of a sudden you can start feeling that connection. So number one, be curious and notice something about somebody you're speaking to that creates connection. Number two, you know, listen with curiosity. And number three, try something new. You know, if somebody you're talking to is saying, I went to this yoga class. It was awesome. Can I come with next time? Yeah. Where did you go? Asking how, what, or where questions really create engagement, tells the other person you're listening. And those are ways to create connection when you don't know what to do, whether you're in an environment where you don't know people or you're trying to make a connection for, for business or real estate. Can you be curious? Can you listen curiously? And, and can you do something new? Can you place yourself in a new environment uh, as we all love to expand in new places? Wow. Um, so again, a lot there. Um, so you you actually brought me to, to, to think of two of the past guests we've had on this show over the last uh, a few weeks. One, and, and you'd love this this gentleman, uh, Ryan, his name is Eric Maddox. And Eric actually is, uh, is the person who led to the capture of Saddam Hussein. And and it's all about what he calls active listening um, mm -hmm. and uh, really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Encourage anybody who what uh, what uh, Ryan just said resonates. We listen to the Eric Maddox uh, episode. Um, he's just unbelievable. Um, and you, you, you nailed that that case that we're often listening to, to respond and then not digging deeper um, uh, in, in curiosity is phenomenal. I love the way you put that. Um, another one of our uh, recent guests is actually a colleague of mine, uh, Bo Parfit. And uh, Bo was just doing a live event in our office a couple weeks ago. And he talked about stepping out of your comfort zone. Yes. How, how how much how much growth comes from that? How much connection comes? And I love the way you said, you know, going and doing something new. That's getting out of your comfort zone, digging deeper in a conversation with somebody instead of when they tell you, oh yeah, I, I just recently went to St. Augustine. Oh great, yeah, I, I love going to St. Augustine too. And said, you know, oh tell me more. You know, how was the trip? Right. right. Tell me more. You know, in, in actually listening and caring and having curiosity, it's it's amazing the connection that that can be had. I've also been taught to salespeople if you were to go to a party, and just listen. Just every time somebody gives you information, just ask curious, open-ended questions. You're gonna walk out people saying, "Man, that's the greatest person I ever met." Um, you could have said nothing the whole night, but just listened and asked questions and showed interest because everybody wants to to feel. Uh, listen to and feel uh, important and acknowledged and seen as you, you said all this. So really, really phenomenal. Um, from that, I want to I go to another uh, kind of topic that you have in your book that I think is really powerful. You hit on it earlier. It actually brings me back to another guest we recently, recently had, Hal Elrod, who is uh, the author of The Miracle Morning. Um, and he teaches on the concept of savers. And, and, and uh, one of those components, uh, his A in savers is affirmations. Mm. And you call it, I am, I can, I will. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. I think it's just so, so powerful. I, my mind immediately went to affirmations, but talk about, what, what do you mean by, you know, I am, I can, I will, which I think is one of actually the chapter titles in your, in your book. Well, I was, you know, in one cleat at my eighth practice at Notre Dame because I got knocked out of my cleats in a play. And, you know, everybody, ooh, you know, so here I am, this freshman laying down on the field. I've got grass on my eyes. You know what I mean? Never a good feeling. And uh, and I went to my room that night and I was just like, I need to I need to find something to to create my success. So I spoke the words. I am. I can. I will. I said, I am here because I can play football. I will. I will graduate and I will focus tomorrow on this one drill. I'm going to knock the crap out of this guy. And sure enough, the same guy that had knocked me out of my cleats, I had knocked him back in this drill. Had he done anything other than what he had done previously, uh, he would have won. But I was convicted. I was committed. And even though I hadn't had that success yet, I created it by saying, I am going to be successful. I can go hit them. I will be successful tomorrow. And I've used that throughout my life. I mean, the night before the Super Bowl, I said, I am terrified that my greatest achievement will be my greatest failure if we lose this game. But you know what? I am ready. I am prepared. I am excited. I can go out there, put on my pads tomorrow, knock the crap out of somebody. I will be a champion. 
And, and so the words I am really create your identity, gives you purpose, you know, who you are, what you are doing. It also allows you to be honest with yourself. I mean, I told you, I, I said to myself, I am not listening. I am being arrogant. And that's where you come in with that second form of your mindset with I can. You know, when your good's not good enough, instead of looking at what happened, instead of trying to blame somebody else like we all do, right? What can you do? And this is how you stay in motion in failure. This is how you find gratitude in failure, right? Uh, I am I am somebody who blew their first million dollars, you know? And I said to myself, I can make sure this never happens again. I can read about this guy, Warren Buffet. I like buffets as well. I can learn it's Warren Buffett. I can start investing in companies I use. I will learn about real estate and I will listen to podcasts. I will read. I will I will let I will be wealthy for the rest of my life. And, and I've been able to create that. So um, with the I can, it really gives you the 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 opportunity to find your opportunities when you're stuck, when your good's not good enough. And then the I will is just a commitment. That's the action part, right? I will listen to podcasts. I will be a champion. I will focus on the play. Um, so with the framework, I am, I can, I will. I've been able to choose my mindset in failure, in success, after my career, um, but as a parent and also as, a, as an investor. So that's really been the difference in my life. And, and choosing your mindset will be the difference in yours. Wow. So uh, a lot of what you just said to me, uh, one way to kind of summarize a lot of that is, is intentionality. Um, and, and I can just tell just the bit of time we spent today, the, the level of intentionality you, you've approached, what you're going to do in your life, what you're going to accomplish. Um, and uh, it, it's often, you know, you use the word grit a lot as well uh, here today. And grit's one of our core values here. And I often say, you know, grit is what separates the most successful people in the world from everybody else. It's not maybe what it is. I don't think that's the case. It is. It's what separates mm -hmm. the most people in the world from everybody else, which is setting big goals and then, you know, having, uh, you know, passion and perseverance towards the achievement of those 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 goals consistently day in and day out with intentionality to, to what you're going to uh, accomplish. And, um, you know, I heard a lot of that in what you, you talked about here. And, and one of the things you, you even use examples is I'm going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to read books. I'm going to going to get better intentional about that. So before I kind of move into the next question, actually, I want to talk to you about goal setting, which I know is a is a topic in your book. Uh, I'd love for you to share. So you, obviously we got your book here, Mindset for Mastery. What are the one or two most impactful books you've ever read that, that's that been that's helped you in your journey? Well, you know, outside of the religious text that I love in the Quran, you know, um, I really love the book Impact by Robert Caldini. Uh, it's a huge book that really dictates, uh, it really tells you how, how we think as human beings and how we can create um different you know influences right so one thing we don't we as a people do not like inconsistency right and, and so when we're having a conversation you know instead of arguing i ask somebody well how consistent are we here you know uh in football right now there's a lot of distractions happening with coaches right and and just a few years ago when a when a certain player was a distraction uh, everybody couldn't wait to call that out well are we being consistent with how we treat distractions we can be against distractions for our favorite teams but can we be consistent? So impact, I believe it's Robert Caldini. Um, that's a huge one. And then The Alchemist. I just loved that book. It's a short read and it is everything in life. It, it tells you, you know, when you're knocked down, get up and don't go back to the familiar. You can always go back, go forward. And most importantly, you know, what you are seeking is, is within yourself. So um, Influence and uh, The Alchemist, two phenomenal books. Uh, two books I highly recommend for anybody else in their reading if they're if they're a reader like ourselves. Awesome. So I, so I think the first time, and probably probably because you're on the Impact show, you, you said Impact, but it is Influenced by Robert Cald Caldini. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, phenomenal, yeah, yeah. phenomenal uh, book. Uh, agreed. And then Alchemist. If Ryan's endorsement of of uh, the Alchemist was not enough, that was the great late Kobe Bryant's favorite all time book as as well. And that's actually who led me to reading it. Uh, many years ago when i heard him say that uh, phenomenal uh, book so um so let's let's move from there into into goal setting so you know uh talk to you a little bit how, how do you go about setting goals you know you've gone out there you're a champion you have achieved greatness in your career and aren't slowing down here in your next career you know how do you go about setting goals um and uh, and then then achieving them as you as you call it picking up a shovel and and digging um so talk to you a little bit about that well you know setting goals starts with finding the work you know, I'm interested in becoming a real estate executive. All right. I can learn about it. I can identify what that means. I can learn about 
what type of real estate I want to be in. I can get a licensure in, in one form of real estate so that I can have credibility. Uh, I will approach this. I will read this. I will find a mentor. I think it's important with goals to not listen to other people, right? Because a lot of people will say, even those close to you, why are you doing that? Or you can't do that. Or why would you do that when you're already good at this? Well, those are people who are comfortable in life and they'll never understand the moves you make or why. So find what you want to create, set that goal, but keep it short term. Allow yourself some wins. I mean, even if it is, hey, you know, I'm going to become a real estate broker or I am going to become an investor. I'm going to read a book on investing. You read that book. Boom. That's a great goal. The other thing is when we write down our goals, you are 70 percent more likely to achieve them. Right. So some of the goals I wrote the night before the Super Bowl was, you know, forgive myself, overcome my mistakes and failures. Right. Because it happens in every game. Have fun and raise the trophy. And I did all three things. So writing them down is huge. Putting them where you can see them. Um, and don't have seven goals, right? I mean, at the Pittsburgh Steelers, they say, we have one goal, right? And if you're not on board, get out. And that explains everything. That explains why you're doing extra work. That explains why questions are being asked. That's, that explains why even when you win, coaches might be disappointed because there's a standard in Pittsburgh to win a championship. And even though you might beat another team in the NFL, you didn't uphold that standard. So uh, limit them, make them att attainable. Don't let anybody discourage you choose your mindset and go do the work pick up your shovel and dig some some people in in the mining world they have to use the flashlight on their helmet to to create space unless you're unless you're going that deep unless you're needing that much resources you're really not trying so give yourself some effort get rid of the excuses pick up a shovel and dig wow that is a great way uh i think to wrap up uh this podcast other than i want to make sure um to open it up to you for any any final uh thoughts and also to let people know how do they get in touch with you i know you're you're a sought after uh speaker obviously people can pick up your your book tell us where um any other way people can get in touch with you learn more about your journey and and the incredible uh wisdom you've gained and, and are sharing on on your journey yeah check me check out my website ryanharris68.com uh check me out on instagram ryanharris underscore 68 I'm also on Twitter. You can search my name there. Um, and my book, Mindset for Mastery, is on Amazon.com. And, and I'm always a resource. You know, Don, I think you do a great job of showing people the vast world of investment, investors, how people build their wealth, how people create their mindset, how people have lived their life. And I encourage everybody listening to, to find what that is for them. You Find a mentor and, and use the tools around you to succeed. Have fun doing it, too. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great having you here, Ryan. I think I'm going to have to have you come back because there's so many things I wanted to dig deeper on, but um, but that was uh, was incredible. Thank you very much for being with us. A lot of wisdom there, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of the day, Ryan. Appreciate it. This has been Don Wenner on the Impact Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. You can check out our other episodes by subscribing wherever you get your podcast, or on YouTube or check us out online by going to impactwithdon.com. I encourage I challenge you to make an impact.